Hello everybody, it's Trisha from Huntress Habits and I started on a project and I thought why am I not recording this project? And then I thought even the project itself the reason why I'm doing it has a story and sometimes people like to hear that story behind things and I don't tell them that well. I tend to repeat myself and go off into different directions and and lead into something else. And to, do, do you do that? Well, I do it. And you probably know that already. But anyway, so I said, okay, I am just going to do it right after this. <laughs> Well, if you've ever gone to my YouTube homepage, you're going to see this background. And that's a little bird, whether it's a hummingbird or not, that's a little bird. And it has a story behind it. And we'll get to that in a second. Like I said, I'll go off into one thing and then into another. But this was my project. Recently, my dad passed away. My mother passed away about five, six years ago. And I'm going through and I'm taking down all these pictures. And I can remember this one hanging in my grandparents' home. And the only reason mother liked it was because it was a farm scene and it reminded her of her childhood and what she remembers as a child and so it had its special place well i wanted to keep the frame but this doesn't remind me of anything maybe a little bit of my uncle's home but it it i'll probably keep it back in a scrapbook somewhere but i wanted to use the frame more than anything because that's something that I know my dad kept because it, it, it had a memory to him. And probably because of my grandfather. And I could go on to stories and stories and stories. Well, I decided, okay, it's the perfect size for this one. Now, even though I put a border on this one and it's meant to be matted like a watercolor would be matted or a print would be matted. I said, I will just cut it up and I will make it work on this frame. And right now we're making it block a little bit of the light <laughs> from shining and glaring down on things. That's something else that's been a hindrance lately. And, you know, when you start to do something and you find out that just one thing after another keeps going wrong, and you think maybe, just maybe you're not supposed to be doing that anymore. Maybe it's supposed to be leading towards something else. And then I went back and I look at this painting. Now this is the first painting I had done in two years since I had stopped teaching. I had not picked up a color. I had not picked up a paintbrush, and I say colored, colored pencil. I had not picked up any inks, 
nothing. And I had heard about uh, gel gelatos through my Bible journaling class. And so I said, well, I'm going to try those. Everybody says they work like watercolors. And so just to play around with them, I, you know, tape it off and I get to go in. And, you know, normally something with a paintbrush that would have took me maybe, you know, two hours to paint. This took me days because I was playing more with those gelatos than I was concentrating on the the picture itself. I'm I'm trying to decide do I do I tell you more about this or do I tell you about this? And I think what I'm gonna do is go to the end screen that I use. And do you see this right up here at the top where it says detours still lead to your destiny? Well, three, a little over three years ago, I had been ill for quite a while and I just couldn't teach anymore. It was taking everything I had to get up in the mornings. And then when I went home, all I could do was go straight to bed. And I knew it was time. I, my students weren't benefiting from me. And uh, long story short, the fibromyalgia had progressed severely. And there was nothing. I kept being told there was nothing they could do about it. And to exercise more. Well, you can't exercise when you can't get up and move. So... <laughs> Anyway, I came home knowing that my daughters lived nearby and moved in with my dad, who had also been ill and needed someone to encourage him to eat more. So I said, between the two of us, we're going to help each other. And that's what I did. And I kept thinking, these detours that I'm taking are leading me away from my path and what I'm really wanting to do because I wanted to teach more than anything. Got to pause there. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the frame just a little bit. Uh, this particular frame had masking tape on it that was so dry. Oh, I uh, need to get you to that screen, don't I? Thank you for reminding me, whoever it was out there. It had tape on it so dry that if I bend it, it I mean, it tears. This is just plain masking tape that's probably been on there. If it was to be aged, I would say at least 40 years, if not more. You know, I could sell it as an antique. <laughs> but I peeled all that masking tape off, and I've tried very carefully. And I say very carefully because every one of these nails are rusted. He used nails instead of staples in every one of them. And yes, I've had a tetanus shot, so I'm really not too worried. That's something as teachers you do no matter what, especially art teachers. I should say uh, art teachers because other teachers don't have to worry about it quite as bad as our teachers do. And I look at this cardboard and I wonder how old it is. I'll set it over to the side because I will probably use that same one. And I thought this would be interesting just for everyone else to see as I took it apart. And it would be a memory, a keepsake for me. Even if nobody watches it. Now, where they got this, I don't know. 
I'm thinking maybe, I thought at first it was puzzle pieces. And it's got two marks here. I don't know if you can see those. As if they were wet, maybe. On both sides. I have no idea. But, okay, that is going to go up here. And then, what I'm going to do is teach you how to, hopefully without breaking this glass or this video will be totally over. And I'm working on a glass mat that's tempered. Let's see if I can take it out yet. And my, both my dad and my grandfather, you know, I don't even have to take it out, but the reason I was wanting to take it out, I was wanting to see the edges and see if they had ground them down or if they had just cut them. And they just cut them. But my, my grandfather had worked for Pittsburgh Glass for years and years and years. He retired from there. And so we had all kinds of glass around the home. Okay, so I don't need that anymore because I, or at least right at this minute, I've got the template over here. I'm not going to use the background. Now, we're going to have a little bit of a glare there. But I'm going to use this as my template on where to cut. Now, no matter where I cut, I'm losing my signature. So I'm going to have to put that back in it. And I can tell that my camera is jumping. Guys, let me see if I can stop that. It's trying to focus. Okay, and it's probably because of that glare. But I... I just looking at it right now, I believe that this picture was meant for that frame. So, I'm going to find some tape, some blue tape. And I want you to know, since I have moved my studio around, I know where nothing is. Ah, washi tape. That will work just enough for me to pencil around it. I was going to use painter's tape, but since I'm not sure where it is, we're going to put a little bit of washi tape. And we're going to use this as our template. Now, washi tape is not supposed to be a permanent sticking tape. But I have found, depending on the brand that you buy, sometimes it will. So, got to be careful with that too when I pull it off. And that's why I'm using very, very small pieces. Okay, now, normally I would have a pencil right within reach because of my grandkids wanting to draw. So, here we go. Got all kinds here. Okay, let's just go with an HB. That's going to be soft enough, but yet hard enough to where it will leave something that I can see.
and by using watercolor paper or doing this on watercolor paper I'm also indenting so even if the lead wasn't making a mark it would be indenting the paper okay now let's take that off set this aside and find some scissors yes my little Cricut scissors is what I choose to use today now I could put this in the paper cutter but I, I think it'd be too long so I'm going to go ahead and take most of it off and I'm cutting just outside that edge and I tell you why I do that usually you can always tr take away but you can't add to so it's best to d have to trim twice you know it's kind of like when you're working with wood measure twice cut once well here we want to make sure that we have I'm going to go ahead and snip that off just to keep it out of the way and as I cut maybe I can get back to the story Whoop. as I became my dad's caregiver and as he got a little bit better and I started improving I started managing to go to church on Sundays that would be the only time that I would leave him and mainly because I knew that he would stay in his chair and he'd probably go outside and watch everybody drive by as they go to church and tell him hello and then he would probably fall asleep as he was watching everybody and so I didn't have to worry about him unless he fell asleep in the middle of the road so anyway during my the sermons at church somebody's home and somebody hears her being home that squawking okay anyway as when I go to church sometimes I would be inspired and it's not that I wasn't listening but I would be inspired to sketch as I listened and this is what I sketched out one day during our service well it sat in my Bible for probably a couple of weeks and I finally pulled it out and that's when I decided to pull the gelettos out and start making art again now whether you call it art or not that's up to you but it was definitely mark making and it inspired me enough to where I had to start doing something again well a friend of mine told me about her friend getting the cricket and it reminded me that a friend at work at school another teacher Vanessa had told me that she had gotten a cricket and I had even done some research you know I went over let's see 
I went over and I researched Cricut. And it didn't look like this then. It was the old way. And I started trying to figure out exactly what to do. Well, she came in and she showed me one day all these wonderful projects. She said, Trisha, you could do this with your kids. When they finish a project, you could let them come up and work on the cricket and create something of their own, even if it's just making flowers or cutting down a landscape or, or something like that. Give them a step farther, especially since I taught sculpture. And so, okay, I printed out some, some projects and I started writing up some lesson plans and that's as far as it went. Because I had to wait for the next year to come along to get school budget. Well, from there, when I was reminded by this friend who had just walked in, and she's keeping Sheba quiet for me right now. Thank you. Oh, I figured she'd get her out of the cage. Oh. Well, it depends. Where is Miss Bella? Right there behind you. Oh, well. Not a, good idea. not a good idea if Miss Bella's in here. Yes, Miss Bella's in here. Okay, <laughs> Miss Bella's here. You and can't Bella have both here. in the house at the same time. Well, they could be in the house. Or at the they, same time. Yeah, just one has to be because I get bit. caged up. I get bit. Yes. Okay, back to the story. Anyway, so I started doing research and I would stay up at night. I went to YouTube and I put in Cricket. And this is what I came up with. Video after video after video after video after video after video. Not knowing who to watch. I watched them all. Auntie Tay. I fell in love with Melody Lane. Carol, Lori, Nuna Maker, and I can say her name right now. Thank you, Lori. Ken's Creations. Did I mention Auntie Tay? Yes. I learned that I wanted one. That's all I knew, is that I was going to go ahead and get one, and I was going to find a way, because once I saw... All of these wonderful images. Wasn't worried about the projects, but knowing that no matter how I felt, all I had to do to get an image was cut it out. I didn't have to draw it. I didn't have to cut it with scissors. The machine would do it for me. So, that's what we did. It went on sale July, you know, the Christmas in July thing. Well, guess what happened? What was it? Three months later, the maker was introduced. No, I don't have one yet, but I will. I will. But in the process of all this, I decided if they can make videos, I can make videos. I remember my students telling me, Miss Huntress, you need to be making those videos instead of showing us other people's. Why don't you do it? And I said, well, they've already made them. Why do I need to make them again if I can just use theirs? And they said, well, no, you need to do it. You need to do it. I'm trying to get my mouse where I need it. There we go. And so, have and behold, whatever the case may be, I wonder which way this goes.
think it was that way. Okay. I started making videos. I had the phone. I was able to do them out. And I knew how to put it in the computer. And I could edit it. But I found out I didn't have time to edit. That would have meant staying up much later than I already did. And I definitely didn't have the energy. So my videos just became what they are in the beginning. And now I have time. Okay, we're going to trim just a little bit off right here. That was that same corner I trimmed already, too, guys. And so now, after taking this sabbatical, I'm healing more and more each day. But something kicked in today and said, you've got to go back to it. You've got to get it going. And I kept finding excuses. Either my mount for my overhead projector wasn't working right. Or moving in here to the desk. And I'll show you later on that. The way his, his roll top desk is, it cuts off half of the, the screen here. Actually, you can see it right here. But this is a fluorescent light here. So that's got to come out anyway. I don't want a fluorescent light on, on our projects. That's just going to put a yellow tin on them. Okay. One more little nail here to fight with. So I got my freebie done today. I tried not to quit those. Except when I'd find excuses. You know, I could put this behind this, but I'm not. Okay, where's that cardboard? I told you I was going to use it. I may have it upside down. Now, this is not a professional mounting. Please don't think that I'm teaching you that. By no means is this a professional mounting. But I am keeping within the antiqueness and how my dad would do things the simplest he could to get the job done. And maybe I'll tell you about that story someday soon. Okay, I've got one more nail to fight with. And this little hook. There we go. Now all we have to do is press our nails back down. I hope... And of course, I had two nails come out. I will probably seal this. Just because it is watercolor and dampness may change it. So I won't need to put those nails back in. Let's see how it looks. There we go. And now it will hang in my studio. What do you think? 
Oh, by the way, do you see those light bulbs? That light fixture? My grandparents got married under that. That's the reflection. My daughter's supposed to get it, but she hasn't yet. Okay, there we go. That was good. I'll tell you the story of this later. Okay, Dusty, get over here. Why? Because I told you to. <laughs> Say hi. Hi, guys. This is, you can see yourself right over here uh -huh. so you know if you're in frame. I'm not in frame. That looks good. <laughs> Thank you. And it's under glass, which I probably should have cleaned the inside of the glass. Oh, but well. I didn't. Oh, well. That'll give it texture. And the camera's over here. Okay. And as soon as I can get her retired and a free weekend, you're going to learn more about her. <laughs> you probably anyway. don't want to be right, but <laughs> oh, yeah. should be interesting. It's, it's, it's a Laurel and Hardy type relationship. Yeah. So, see you later, guys. And don't forget to take care of that thumb. See you later. Bye-bye.